What's going on guys, Juice Messi here and welcome to a brand new video and welcome to your daily dose of transfer content. And today is going to be Sunday the 20th of September. We have confirmed deals to go through as well as the rumours. So just before we get started, if you could do that good stuff by leaving a like rating, press the subscribe button and press the bell notification next to it so you never miss an upload. Yesterday's episode will be down below in the description box and the current schedule every day at 8am UK time, there'll be a new video for you to look forward to. And finally, drop a comment below, I'll try to respond to as many as I can. So first up today, Genoa have signed right back Davide Zappacosta from Chelsea and I covered that transfer yesterday, but a new one is Marco Piazza from Juventus. Both have joined on season long loan deals, though I don't think any have got options to buy. Nottingham Forest have signed a new player from Fulham. The player is going to be Irish fullback Cyrus Christie and he has also joined on a season long loan. Middlesbrough have completed the signing of striker Tuba Akpom. It's from Greek side Paok or P-A-O-K, not sure I say it, and it's an undisclosed fee, though it's thought to be just short of £3 million. Leicester have completed their deal to sign Cengiz Under from Roma. The Turkish international completed his medicals on Friday, paving his way for a move from the Serie A club. The deal though has changed from what was reported a couple days ago. Initially, we thought there was an obligation to buy. That isn't in the deal anymore. Instead, it's a loan worth 3 million euros, plus a further option to buy for 24 million. Leicester are also in the hunt for a new central defender and they've been linked to Wesley Fofana um, from St Etienne and Jonathan Tarr from Bayer Leverkusen. And now we have got two transfers which literally came out of nowhere. In the last 24 hours they've gone from rumours to being completed. So the first one is Keanu Herver. He has joined Wolves from Liverpool. It's in a deal worth an initial £9 million and it could rise by a further 4.5 to £13.5 million. That's after add-ons. Liverpool have a 15% sell-on clause also involved in the contract and he's a player with massive potential. He needs more first-team football though, which was one of his desires to move away and uh, Liverpool are kind of upset to lose him. But again, he needs to play football to develop and he's unlikely to get that at Anfield. He would have been third choice right back behind Trent and also Nico Williams and he'd be sixth choice centre-back. But I think in the long run, it's a fantastic bit of business from Wolves. They've got a very talented player on their hands. And the player going the opposite direction from Wolves to Liverpool is going to be Diogo Jota. And the transfer is set to cost about £45 million. The Portuguese international forward has agreed a five-year deal at Anfield and will become the second signing of the week or matter of 24 hours after the Premier League champion secured the signing of Thiago. And the deal reminds me very much of the Fabinho one a couple of seasons ago. It went from being a rumour from a couple of journalists to being a completed deal in essentially the same day. And James Pearce does say that Liverpool will pay less than 10% of the Jota fee in the next 12 months. So essentially £4 million for this transfer and for Thiago we're paying just £5 million for the first year. The initial fee is £41 million rising to 45 after add-ons and you can also take the Keanu Herver fee off that. So you're looking at a total of about £32 million or so which I think is a good bit of business. Inter defender Diego Godin is now on the verge of completing his move to Cagliari and this story comes from Calcio Mercato. The Uruguayan defender will sign a three-year contract and is set to be worth around 2.5 million euros per season. Inter are preparing to announce Godin's departure in the coming days and the 34-year-old is set to leave the San Siro after just one full year at the club. And now we have a pretty interesting story from Gerard Romero. So Ronald Koeman has told Barcelona starlet Ricky Puj that he should look for a new club this season and he will not be counting on him. Now I find this kind of mental because Ricky Puj is considered one of the biggest talents coming out of Barca right now and to not have like any faith in him and not even plan to use him this season, it shows the direction the club is going and it's not looking good. Sheffield United manager Chris Wilder says the club have held talks with Liverpool that's over a move for English striker Rian Brewster and this story is from the man himself. Uh, the 20 year old will apparently be available on a permanent basis and Liverpool are expected to ask for about 20 to 25 million and there will be a buyback option included. But 90 men do say Sheffield United will face competition from Crystal Palace who also want to sign Brewster from the Premier League champions. 
US men's national team defender DeAndre Yedlin, he looks set to leave Newcastle for Besiktas, and this according to Sky Sports News. The fullback has been linked with a move away from the Magpies all summer, and a return to the MLS was listed as a possible move. But instead, Yedlin will now head to Turkey on a free transfer, that's despite having one year left on his Newcastle deal. Athletic Club are close to sealing the signing of former player Javi Martinez from Bayern Munich, and this story is from Marca. The 32-year-old will return to the San Mamés Stadium on a two-year contract and the option to extend it by an extra year. Bayern are willing to accept a fee below €10 million Euros for Martinez, who only appeared in 16 Bundesliga matches for the club last season. And it's safe to say the position that Bayern are in right now, they are looking very, very good. Obviously just won the Champions League and the treble, but their first game of the season on Friday night against Schalke, just a casual 8-0 win. Le Keep are now reporting that Chelsea and Wren have finally come to an agreement for goalkeeper Edouard Mendy, and it will be concluded at around €25 million. Euros. And they suggest that attempts to include players such as Giroud and Tomori in the deal have not succeeded. The article does go on to mention that Wren are actually struggling to buy players in their current budget, so maybe including Tomori or Giroud would have helped them out massively, but instead they've worked out a deal just for cash. A story which came up a couple weeks ago was Ryan Ken and a potential move to the Premier League. So according to The Athletic, the SN Leeds are keen on signing Rangers attacker Ryan Ken, that's after ending their pursuit for Liverpool's Harry Wilson. Marcelo Bielsa wants the 23-year-old to join the club, who spent the last two seasons in Scotland after leaving Liverpool. Now Rangers are demanding a massive fee because they paid about 8 to 10 million for him uh, this time last year I think it was, but Liverpool do maintain a pretty high sell on percentage. So whatever they do sell him for, a fifth of that does go to his old club. And for FIFA Ultimate Team purposes, I imagine a lot of people want this transfer to happen. Having Kent in the Premier League does open up a lot of potential special cards we could get, and it was obviously very good on FIFA 20. Another story this time from The Athletic is that Norwich have rejected two offers from Barcelona for Max Ahrens. One of the Spanish Giants' bids came in at €20 million Euros plus bonuses for the 20-year-old right-back, but the Canaries are holding out for a much higher fee. Barca will now turn their attention to Ajax star Serginio Dest, but they do face a lot of competition from Bayern Munich. And because of that, Bayern also might try to sign Aaron's themselves. And Barcelona are in the market for a right back, because current player Nelson Semedo, it looks like he could be moving on. And this story comes from ESPN. The SM Barca are open to selling Nelson Semedo to a Premier League club during this transfer window. The Blaugrana have received several offers from English clubs for the 26-year-old defender and could greenlight his exit at some point over this weekend. Two clubs come to mind that I've seen linked to him so far. Manchester City were the favourites a couple months ago and that was part of a swap deal for Joao Cancelo and the other club were Tottenham but they've now signed Doherty. I wouldn't actually be too surprised to see Nelson Semedo make his switch to Wolves. Obviously they have a lot of Portuguese players and a lot of Portuguese ties, but they did sell Doherty to Tottenham like I mentioned. I don't think they've replaced him so far, and I think it's a, a pretty logical transfer. Diego Simeone has told Lucas Torreira that he wants him to join Atletico Madrid, and this according to a Uruguayan journalist called Sebastian Giovanelli. Reports suggest he could be close to a loan deal though to go to Torino instead in Serie A and that could also include the option to buy, but maybe he could be part of a deal involving Thomas Partey going to Arsenal. As if Friday wasn't crazy enough for Liverpool fans anyway, Thiago was announced and fully confirmed and a couple hours after that Diogo Jota was also essentially a done deal as well. But now there is yet another player linked to a move to the Premier League champions. So first up according to Transfer Mart, they said Liverpool want to sign a centre-back this summer. They sold Dejan Lovren to Zenit St. Petersburg and are looking for a replacement as a fourth choice player. They've identified Ozan Kabak from Schalke and Diego Carlos from Sevilla, but out of the two, Kabak is higher on their list of priorities. The Reds are fully aware that Schalke are in a difficult financial situation and they need to generate money through player sales. Schalke though, the Schalke sources have confirmed to a journalist called Chris Williams that the Bundesliga club, they have publicly said the 20 year old is not for sale. That's because their squad is settled. But privately, Schalke have communicated that a £23 million bid, it would force them to rethink on their stance. 
Manchester United have come to terms on a five-year deal with Porto's Alex Tellez, and this story is from RMC Sport. United now must come to terms with Porto over a transfer fee for the Brazilian left-back, and the rumoured fee is about €20 million. Euros. The fullback is also being chased by Paris Saint-Germain, who are now considering whether to make a move or not for the 27-year-old. But some good news for United in regards to this transfer is that PSG boss Thomas Tuchel, he was asked about possibly signing a left-back, and he said, no, that is not a priority. And what I gather has been a pretty difficult transfer window for United fans. They've been left very disappointed by the lack of signings apart from Van der Beek. And most of the time they're linked to players, they agree personal terms, but nothing ever happens after that. And the next story is from Lyon's president, Jean-Michel Ula, and he's asked whether Arsenal will sign Hussam Auer from the club. The quotes do say, No, I don't think so. No offer yet. It seems that Arsenal don't want to or can't invest a price for Hussam, who is our best player. And Ular is known for being extremely difficult to negotiate with. Arsenal struggled, I think, initially with the Alexandra Lacazette deal, as, for example, Liverpool did as well for Nabil Fakir. So the transfer itself, it could be a difficult one, but I think there's a good chance it will happen. Ular is just bluffing to the media. And the Daily Star do add that Arsenal have agreed personal terms already with the Lyon star midfielder. So it's one to watch out for definitely and it could well happen in the next two weeks. But that guys is going to be it for this video. So if you could do that good stuff by leaving a like rating, press the subscribe button and press the bell notification next to it so you never miss an upload. Yesterday's episode will be down below in the description box and the current schedule every day at 8am UK time, there'll be a new video for you to look forward to. So thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.